Hello, and welcome to the February 2023 Economic and Market Update, presented by Commonwealth Financial Network. My name is Brad McMillan, and I'm Commonwealth's Chief Investment Officer. After a tough December, markets bounced back in January. U.S. markets were up for the month with gains for all indices. International markets did even better, and even bond markets rallied strongly. After a very hard 2022, it was a good start to the year. What drove the gains was the continued drop in inflation and the ongoing decline in longer-term interest rates, as the benchmark yield on the 10-year U.S. Treasury note dropped by almost a full half point to below 3.5%. With inflation projected to decline even further, markets are betting on the Federal Reserve slowing or pausing its rate increases. Expected lower rates typically mean higher bond and stock prices, and that's just what we saw last month. Despite the market's gains, though, the economy showed signs of slowing. While job growth remained healthy and economic growth beat expectations, consumer spending dropped for the second month in a row, while business confidence and investment also pulled back. A recession continues to look likely this year, and that's the main risk we face as we move into 2023. The good news, though, is that any recession we do get is likely to be mild. With the job market still strong and with consumer confidence still healthy, the impact on the average person should be limited. Moreover, a mild recession could well end up being positive for markets if it encourages the Fed to pause rate increases. No one wants a recession, but if we are going to have one, now's about as good a time as any. And that's a good way to start the year. Inflation looks to have peaked. Interest rates are down. And while we are probably facing a recession, it should be mild. Overall, conditions are pretty favorable for markets this year. This year is likely to be better than last and maybe by quite a bit. That said, though, there are also risks beyond the recession in play. Here in the U.S., politics are a major concern, with the debt ceiling at the head of the list. Internationally, we don't know how or whether the Chinese economy will rebound from COVID, and that and the ongoing Ukraine war are keeping markets on edge. And, of course, there are also the risks we don't even see yet. We're certainly not done with turbulence, but despite those risks, as we look ahead, signs are that things will be better six months from now than they are today. The debt ceiling confrontation will be resolved. We'll know where we are with the recession, and inflation and rates should continue the decline. When things are likely to get better, the downside risks tend to be contained over time, which is where we are right now. And that's really not a bad place to be. The risks are real, but we're increasingly moving past many of them into more positive territory. As we've seen, market turbulence is normal. But as investors, we need to keep looking at our long-term goals. And the coming year, despite the real concerns, does look positive. And that's my takeaway from January. That's it for this update. Thanks for watching. Join me in March for the next one. Until then, be sure to check my blog, The Independent Market Observer, for more timely comments. Stay safe, stay sane, and stay healthy. We are getting through this together.